The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Welcome to the evening news on ABS and Tigas News Authority. I am Sherilyn Beza. This evening we begin on a sad note. As we reported last evening, the country has now recorded the ninth murder since the start of the year as a 50-year-old man succumbs to his injuries following a stabbing incident last evening. This evening, the grief and anguish is still raw for one woman whose brother is dead and whose son is the only suspect in the homicide. Jamie J. Roche reports on the pain of loss for Julian Mannix. I can't even eat, I can't even drink nothing. <laughs> Julian Baba Mannix is understandably distraught a day after her brother's tragic death. Police say 50-year-old Veer Selwyn Mannix died Saturday after succumbing to stab wounds he received in an altercation at Point Wharf. It's all the more painful for Julian since her 26-year-old son is in police custody and will likely face a murder charge. This should not have never happened yesterday. It should not have never happen. But all of us are one family. I feel it, so I feel it, I feel it inside. Nobody knows about Almighty God, but I'm going to. No one knows about Jehovah. Everyone in the family feeling it. I'm telling you. Police say both men received injuries during the incident and were taken to hospital, but Selwyn later died. I just hope for the best, but I've been pulled to vote for my son. I know I, I know I lose my brother, but he can't come back. <laughs> but I'm going to miss him. Julian says Selwyn was always there when she needed help. My brother was a loving brother, caring brother, looking for, looking for look out for the family. And if I call him, I say, bro, you have anything can give me for the little ones. He says, sis, I will come. I will come and give you. I love my brother. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love my brother. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. In news still from the blotters, police are probing what appears to have been the country's third suicide in recent weeks. A man was found hanging in Casada Gardens this afternoon, sending shockwaves across the area and further beyond. Jessica Russell was on the scene. Another person has apparently taken his own life, making it the third suicide in less than two weeks. Scores of people descended around the Casada Gardens racetrack after news spread that a man had reportedly ended his own life. Police say the Casada Gardens man was 44 years old and the act happened shortly after one. However, the man's body was still at this building at the back of Lingy's when our team arrived after two in the afternoon. He was later pronounced dead by a medical doctor. Last week, Darion Patterson apparently ended his life, and a week prior, Alana Michael also died. Meanwhile, world suicide. <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Meanwhile, World Suicide Prevention Day was last Friday, with the Pan American Health Organization calling suicide an urgent public health emergency. It's important to know the warning signs that a person may be contemplating a suicide. According to the United Nations, these include talking about wanting to die, feeling immense guilt or shame, or feeling like a burden to others. Others may say they feel empty and have no reason to live. Some people considering suicide may be extremely sad, anxious, agitated, or full of anger. Changes in behavior, which may indicate a person is thinking about ending their life, includes researching ways to die and avoiding friends and family. They may also give away important items, show extreme mood swings, or treat, retreat too much or too little, or increase drug use. Anyone who detects warning signs of suicide, whether in themselves or in someone they know, should seek help from a healthcare professional as soon as possible. Now in other news, one veteran attorney is weighing in on the issue of mandatory vaccination against COVID-19 as debate continues to intensify regarding the issue. Senior counsel Anthony Astefan 
says the Constitution allows for mandates on vaccination, making reference to landmark court rulings. He was a guest on the Brown and Brown show on Point FM on Saturday. The Constitution and the law of Antigua and Barbuda permit the government to put in place measures <clears throat> through primary legislation or, reg or, 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 regu or regulations to protect the public interest by requiring either, either mandates on testing or mandates on vaccines. Senior counsel Anthony Astefan alluded to Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who initially didn't believe the Jamaican constitution would authorize him to impose mandatory vaccination, but is now having second thoughts. He referred to the 1905 ruling of the United States Supreme Court regarding fundamental rights. The American courts have made it absolutely clear that in the face of a pandemic, a right, private rights are subjected to the protection of society as a whole and the public interest and, and subject to regulatory control, including mandatory vaccine. He said this has been part of the European Court of Human Rights ruling in recent times. Astefan brings the argument closer to home to Antigua and Barbuda and the OECS subregion, noting no right is absolute. The Constitution expressly says that my fundamental rights are guaranteed subject to the protection of your rights and to the public interest, and that the government may, in the interest of public health, derogate from whatever fundamental rights I may have in order to protect the rights and, sit and put, uh, the rights of, and, and the health of all. According to Astefan, the only exemption from vaccination scientific institutions have pointed to is a significant medical condition that would be aggravated by the ingredients of the vaccines. Meanwhile, the senior counsel also weighed in on the issue of rights of employees and employers during a pandemic. Astefan says COVID-19 has radically transformed the industrial relations climate as he highlights the rights of the employer. As the opinion of Sir Dennis Byron and Professor Antoine pointed out, they have a statutory, common law, or contractual obligation to put in place measures to protect the lives of all, mm -hmm. all, either by regular, by, 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 by the requirement of a vaccine card mm -hmm. or, or by the issuing of, of, of getting regularly tested. He says these requirements have now become terms and conditions of one's employment in the private and public sector. Astefan explains the consequence if an employee doesn't conform. You are now refusing to comply with a, with, with, with a reasonable term of your employment, which is put there for the paramount purpose of safe, safety and the maintenance of good health. And if you don't want to get vaccinated or the option is given to you of tested and you refuse, you're going to lose your job. And be sure to join ABS on air and online at 8 this evening when we examine the legal and constitutional arguments surrounding mandates on COVID-19 testing and vaccination. We will be joined by attorneys Anthony Astefan and Kenny Kentish. And now in this ABS News update, people are being reminded to be cautious as they travel on Valley Road near Keona Beach Resort. The significant crack in the road has deteriorated further, as our reporter Jamie J. O'Shea observed Sunday. A larger portion of Valley Road has collapsed near Keona Beach Resort. Last Wednesday, experts from the Public Works Department began working on a solution to address the widening crack in the road. The Transport Board has since cordoned off the affected lane with cones and caution tape. The authorities have also erected signs at both sides of the hazard alerting motorists to drive cautiously as they approach the area. The road is a key passageway for people traveling to and from areas like Johnson's Point, Erlins, and Cades Bay. Since traffic has been reduced to a single lane, a motorist is suggesting the authorities erect temporary traffic lights to prevent a bus. In other news this evening, teaching at the St. John's Catholic Primary School resumes this Tuesday. Textbooks for your child, however, can be collected at the school tomorrow. Preschool students are to report to school for face-to-face -face learning on Tuesday as well. 
Grade K students should also attend school on Tuesday for orientation from 8 to 12. But Grade K online classes will begin this Thursday. Grades 1 to 6 students are to log into their online classrooms on Tuesday. Class timetables will be posted in the, the students' Google classrooms. Students are to be dressed in uniform for online classrooms. All staff are fully vaccinated and the school will be making an application to the Education Ministry to go fully face-to-face -face in two weeks' time, once the epidemiological situation allows. Now the window of opportunity is open to apply for a scholarship. The scholarships are attainable to the United Kingdom for September or October of 2022. The deadline, prospective applicants can find more information at the address shown on the screen. The deadline for app online applications is 1st November 2021, while the deadline for submission of hard copies of applications and qualifications to the Ministry of Education, Sports and Creative Industries is Friday 15th October. Commonwealth scholarships include airfare to the United Kingdom and return at the end of the award, tuition and examination fees, and a stipend in excess of 1,000 British pounds per month, among other benefits. As we have been reporting, Antigua and Barbuda's newest Commonwealth scholar for the 2021-2022 academic is Kelsey Harris. She will soon be off to the London School of Economics, LSE, to pursue a master's degree in development studies. That item brings us to the end of our national segment. Sporting developments are up next. Stay tuned.